Emily. Thank you so much for joining us for our Represent campaign here at Code First Girls. I don't know if you'd like to introduce yourself. Absolutely, yeah, more than happy to. Um, so I'm Emily Collier. I'm one of the directors of technology here at TUI, working across the whole of, of Europe. And I'm here today in their Luton office, uh, where it's nice and quiet after the weekend. So TUI Group, one of the largest tourism groups worldwide. I think you've got six airlines and you serve over 180 destinations. So what does a day in the life of a technology director at TUI look like? It's very varied, as, as to be expected, but I do love that variety. Um, most of the days really are spent meeting with people. Um, so this can be to work with the teams to resolve any of the blockers or any issues that they might have with their product delivery. Um, or it could be introduce, uh, interviewing new team members to come and join the team at TUI, um, identifying new uh, technology providers and suppliers, or meeting with my business counterparts to really understand their priorities, any challenges they are facing. So just last week, I was in Hanover uh, meeting with our director of the accommodation only holiday product. Um, today, I'm going to be sitting in uh, presentations from suppliers on our web security solutions. Um, and then later this week, I'm going to join in on the assessment centers for next year's graduates. So very varied, which I love. Fantastic. And your previous life, if you will, your, uh, the beginning of your career and your training, did you start off in technology? Did you study STEM? I studied mathematics at university, yes. So I did um, an undergraduate master's degree on mathematics with engineering at the University of Nottingham. Um, and then from there, dove straight into digital transformation consulting, so very much straight into the world of technology. Um, and since then, have got um, a bit obsessed, I think, with application development, um, and so have been doing that ever since then. Amazing. And it sounds like you've got a real eye over how TUI is using technology holistically. So thinking about from customer insights to data analytics, mm -hmm. how is TUI really using technology to retain its place as market leader? We've really focused uh, recently on um, a modularized architecture approach. So having everything as independently deployable and independently um, in an ecosystem, independently as possible. And this really allows us to leverage um, big data across the entirety of our customer's journey. And that's all the way from, from booking um, on the website to arriving at the hotel um, to the journey home on your return flight. We're capturing data at every single step of that journey um, to ensure that the customer experience is as best as it can be. So we want to be able to learn from the feedback we're getting back and we want to be able to optimize and actually measure the improvements that we're seeing on the experience. So for example, um, on, the, on the website, we use data to improve our advertising so that we're really targeting the adverts to the right person. Um, one advert might annoy someone, whereas another advert might really engage someone. And we want to make sure that those adverts hit the right people. We then look into ensuring the right contents presented for the right types of holidays. We offer a whole range of different types of holiday and some content might make sense for one holiday but not for another. So we need to make sure that that's all right. And then finally ensuring that customers get the right discounts at the right time in the right place so that they can come and book their holiday with us as seamlessly as possible. And we do all of this through multivariant testing. So we push customers down multiple different experiences and measure their, their uh, user behavior and measure their uptake and revenue conversion um, to decide which one's the best one to then launch to the entirety of the customer base. Fantastic. And how have customer data and insights allowed you to track customer behavior all the way through the pandemic and then coming out now to a mm -hmm. point where people are returning to travel? Um, it's, it's been hugely powerful. Um, we, we did see a real impact on what we have as one of our key metrics, which is the conversion metric for customer base. So that's from point of um, looking at a holiday to the point of booking that holiday with us. Um, and we found that really reduced quite substantially. People were coming on and maybe exploring and looking, but didn't have the confidence to actually go ahead and book. And what we've seen over recent months is that that metric has really grown in strength 
strengths to a point now where we're back at those pre-pandemic levels, um, which is really positive to see. I think the other that we are using as a measure is uh, customer satisfaction, so that's CSAT. And we measure that across the customer journey. And we did, again, find that that dropped quite substantially during the pandemic, um, as well as all the disruption that we've had recently that has had an impact on those numbers. Um, we've done a lot of work internally to try and build those numbers back up. And it's great that now in our last quarter of last financial year for us, um, we've seen those numbers starting to grow again and rebound. Um, and actually some of them overtake where we potentially were before the pandemic. So really positive to have that confidence, I think, in that we're heading in the right direction and that we're doing the right things, plus the market returning. And when you're thinking about innovation and bringing in new frontier technology, I guess you can only do that when you have a certain confidence that the infrastructure that you're working on is going to work and that you can rely on it. That probably frees up a lot of time and money to think about innovation and how you can start bringing in new tech. So what does innovation look like to your team? Mm. Um, I think... Innovation is is so essential. Um, we know that the only uh, it's a, a self professed um, saying internally. The only change is is constant change, um, and I think that in the in the travel industry that's more true than than anywhere else potentially. Um, and I think the, the digital transformation that we've gone through has really revolutionized our technology landscape, which is brilliant. Um, but we still need to be thinking about innovation and, and new technologies are always coming onto the market that we can't, we need to be adopting and exploring and, and learning from. Um, so I think we, we sort of have a, a blended approach, I guess, uh, to innovation internally. Um, we have specific teams that are in place to explore new technologies that are coming through in the market understand them, adopt them, test them, trial them out, figure out whether there should be something that we bring in internally, um, and, and they do so. And then they, they educate the teams on them. But secondly to that, um, that wouldn't be successful in isolation. Secondly to that, we also create space within our existing engineering teams and product development teams to focus on making things better. Um, this could be from, you know, remediating a piece of technical debt that's been sat there for months and, you know, they just keep getting frustrated by. So, you know, investing in finding a proper solution for that and in, in uh, enhancing that. Or secondly, they could also be using that time to um, explore the application of that new technology into their existing products. Um, and we really try to ensure that teams are spending, you know, 20 to 30 percent of their time on this on a regular basis. Um, and I think the combination of these together really does create a very effective innovation culture within TUI. You have to be so structured. And this is the thing, you know, yeah. life gets so busy. And especially as I imagine for you, you are a leader of a team. How do you ensure that you constantly have time for that deep focus in your calendar and time to think slightly outside the box other than putting out fires? Mm. I think it's important to um, create the time through some structured methods. So um, we, I recently went to um, a conference over in Lisbon, as an example, and that was two to three days out fully from my diary, my calendar, to focus and explore just what other um, technologists had to offer and the ideas they had and listening to people speak. And that was um, amazingly insightful and really got those creative juices flowing. Um, obviously, we can't go to conferences every month. Um, so on top of that, uh, personally, I really try to um, listen to podcasts um, in my sort of spare time while I'm out walking the dog. I'll put a podcast in so I can just listen and absorb the information as I'm walking. Um, and then also, I think I do find that actually through talking with the teams directly, you get that insight as to what are the problems that they're facing. And actually, it's my job to step back from... Um, the operational solution that they're putting in place and actually hear all the different problems that we're facing from across the different areas of the organization and actually say, no, we need we need a better solution this time and bring a work group together potentially to look at what that bigger, better, more strategic solution really should be. Um, so it's really the responsibility for me to step back and, and have that broader picture. 
Um, so I'd like to just ask uh, maybe an obvious question, but you yourself at TUI are beginning to work with Code First Girls and you're such an advocate for diversity within your technical teams. But why does the travel industry need uh, more, not just more women, but more diverse people uh, in their technical teams? Mm. I think um, to be able to build great products that our customers love and that enable our customers to live happy uh, in accordance with our branding, um, you really need your team to reflect that customer base. Um, I'm an absolute advocate of that and, and truly believe that those sorts of statements are, are true. And as our holiday products are kind of loved by people from all different backgrounds and all different diverse groups, um, we need our teams to reflect that. Um, and I think that's a really clear area of focus for us across the whole organization, not even just in technology um, at the moment. Um, but from a technology perspective, um, it's really working with you guys at, at Code First Girls. These sorts of programs that we're embarking upon are hugely important platforms, I think, to bring the visions that we have, where we have that representation of our customer base in our teams to a reality. And without these sorts of platforms and programs, it would be a very hard challenge for us to solve ourselves. So, um, yeah, I think these sorts of partnerships are crucial to that. Amazing. It's been fascinating to hear about what you're working on at TUI, but I'd like to take a minute to think back to your journey. And you mentioned that you were studying mathematics at university. So I can't imagine as a, a young woman studying STEM that you uh, were often in the majority. So can you explain, do you feel like you're, uh, that's almost been good training for your future career as a woman in tech? Yes, absolutely. Um, from, you know, from choosing my A-levels, so um, I chose mathematics and physics at A-level as well. Um, I was placed into classes uh, where I was the only uh, girl at that point in time um, amongst um, a peer group of, of, of boys. And I think even from that point, um, you, were, you were learning and figuring out how you present yourselves in the, present yourself in those sorts of environments, how you can build relationships um, with those individuals in those sorts of classes. Um, and actually, it, you sort of started learning around how you can best, um, I guess, present yourself and ensure that you have the right relationships. Um, and that kind of went all the way through then my university education. Um, mathematics was, was largely um, quite balanced, but I had an engineering specialty on top of that, which did take me then down into a group that was um, far less represented, had a far lower representation of female. Um, but I did find during school and, and um, university that um, the environments were very inclusive um, and that actually you could really build relationships with the, um, the men in your class and very easily. Um, stepping into the workplace is, is slightly different because I think in, in your education, you're interfacing with um, men that are of the same age to some extent, give or take a year or two potentially, um, which gives, you know, far a lot of common, common ground between you, even though you are different uh, genders. Stepping into the workplace, you're then having to adjust yourself to then start working with men of very, very different ages. Um, and I think that was one of the biggest things that um, I had to overcome when I first stepped into the workplace and also with the... Um, seniority position that I now hold, it's very common that you are interfacing with um, men that are, you know, dare I say, your, your dad's age, for example. Um, and I think it's just the two of the things that I think I really take from um, that sort of experience and, and, and where I am now today is um, really just being your authentic self. Um, ultimately, everybody at work wants to have the same mission, have the same goal, and are working towards the same outcome. Um, and I think if it's hard to, but if you start questioning yourself and, and uh, second guessing your judgment, your assessment, your decision that you've made, um, it can only, I think, put you on the wrong trajectory. So if you're your true authentic self and you're doing things for the reason you believe is true and you, you stand up for that and you're resilient on that, um, I, I think you can really create that place for yourself within the workplace and you have you gain that respect from your peer group um, relatively easily. 
It's really good advice. And it's interesting because you mentioned at the beginning learning how to represent yourself in a male-dominated environment. And so my question was actually going to be how do you continue to uphold your authentic self in a male-dominated environment whilst also being aware that to be able to be taken seriously there are there is some assimilation that does need to take place but i think you've answered it by there by saying remain your authentic self but i wondered whether or not that's something that came quite naturally or if you had to learn that the hard way no i, I think you you do have to learn it the hard way i think when you first naturally step into um the technology world and and also into sort of a very male dominated world you will immediately start looking at the behaviors um that the the people in those senior positions are exhibiting um and for me the behaviors they were exhibiting didn't quite make sense to me uh, because they weren't my natural authentic self and so i think you you do test and learn yourself don't you around if i if i behave that way does this happen if i behave that way does that happen um and i i did end up finding that actually as soon as i was behaving in a way that wasn't true to myself um that's where the seeds of self doubt started coming in um and so kind of after a, f- a few years i guess I, i kind of made that commitment to myself that actually just facing into it as your authentic self i think is the most powerful thing you can do i think it does tie in with needing to have that resiliency though because obviously by presenting your natural your authentic self um you're opening yourself up maybe to some criticism or you're opening yourself up to um challenge um which is natural and all a part of business um and so i think it's having that resiliency to say right i'm opening up my authentic self i may be i may have a, a sort of conflicting idea with somebody else but i believe in it my idea might not be the one that's chosen but i believe in it and if your idea isn't the one that's chosen having that resiliency to dust yourself off get back up again and know oh there's another idea over there i'm going to go after that one is the best thing you can do that's great advice and it reminds me of when my first job in technology i was working in cryptocurrency which you can't really get more male dominated back sort of 8 9 years ago um and my boss i was lucky enough to be part of a female founded business and i remember we went to a conference uh which was absolutely full of eastern european men and we turned up in matching leopard print skirts by accident <laughs> and there was a there was that instant fear of we should go and get changed we don't fit yeah. here we're not going to be taken seriously i should go and rub this lipstick off but actually i was lucky enough to have her as a role model to see you know if she is confident enough in presenting her authentic self we just so happen to both love leopard print then i feel i i'm um if anything sort of supported in being my authentic yeah. self and i wondered as you entered into the workplace did you have any role models that you looked up to that enabled you to have that confidence to rely on that authentic self of yours uh yeah i think i i did absolutely not not at the very beginning of my career i think uh when i entered the graduate world um i didn't feel there were as many um you know women that represented who i wanted to be who i was nor men actually who represented who i wanted to be who or who i was um but at that point you know i joined my graduate program in a cohort and i think the power of that cohort is incredibly strong and within that group of us there are some amazing women in there and amazing men um so that kind of provided us with the support and we could tackle things being our you know um being ourselves in its entirety our millennial selves at that point in time um i think since i i have been able to and lucky to i think and lucky is the word to work with some am- amazing women that really have um demonstrated their true and authentic self um in the workplace um and then provided me with that confidence in order to do that um which is amazing and since i've actually had a lot of um male managers male leaders uh, and male mentors ultimately who have also empowered me to um remain true to myself um and sort of push myself out there as i am um and so i think you don't you know you don't always need to look into a a female mentor and role role model you can get that similarly from from males as well um and i've been lucky enough to find some of each which is great 
That's fantastic. And you mentioned a lot around leadership there. And a lot of our community at Code First Girls are fiercely ambitious and hope one day to land themselves in leadership positions themselves. And you've mentioned along the way you're staying authentic, your resilience, obviously your uh, natural passion for the subject. But beyond those things, what do you think of your personal strengths that has allowed you to end up in, in a leadership position? Mm. Um, I think on top of those, for, for me personally, and obviously everyone's strength is their own personal strength, and, and that's where the authenticity comes in, that you've got to find that strength and drive home that strength. For me, I think it is, um, I guess it's it's sort of the, the people orientation that I've had, um, and also the... Um, Oh, the word escapes me now. The charisma, I think, is something that kind of um, comes naturally to me. You get me talking about a topic, and and if it's something I'm passionate and interested in, it, it just kind of I, I I'm like a a snowball that just keeps growing. You can't stop me talking, and you can't and that sort of charisma for the topic really like exudes itself from me. Um, and I think that's something that's really uh, sort of is quite different potentially to how some males in past have presented themselves within technological conversations because that potentially doesn't come as natural to them um, in that sort of field. So that's really, I, like, I think, allowed me to stand out from the crowd, um, which, you know, ultimately is not having huge amounts of technical strength and technical background. Um, it's not having a deep area of expertise in some obscure technology. Uh, that's just a natural strength of my personality. And that I think that has been one of the one of the areas of my personality, I guess, that has led me down this path of leadership. And it's interesting because that can be seen to be so linked in with your authentic self. I think a lot of people, especially young people, male or female, when they're going into the workplace for the first time, feel like they have to put a lid on their excitement sometimes. Yeah. I certainly felt like that, like I'm, you know, I've got to act adult now. This is the time <laughs> where I can't get carried away with myself. I can't get too excited. But what I'm hearing is that your ability to be true to yourself and have charisma and run a, get, get excited by new technology or run away with a new subject has actually worked in your favor when thinking about building your teams. Yeah. And I wonder when you're thinking about building your teams out, you mentioned there that you know, technical skills aren't everything. Obviously, there needs to be a baseline. But what more are you looking for other than those sort of technical skills when you're hiring into your own team? Yeah, I think it within TUI specifically, um, we're really looking for people that um, believe in the TUI values. Um, so for, for us, um, that's really around being a trusted member of the team. So being somebody that your team members, the management and your employees can trust and, and sort of rely upon. And then I guess more personally for me, um, around what I would look for beyond those technical skills is really around the ability to um, you know, bond as a team and to look out for each other and help each other out. Um, if one succeeds, and the others don't, then no one's succeeded. It's all about, in my opinion, we're in it together and we all want to succeed together. Um, and that's really personal to me and I find really important in the team that I, I build. It's really interesting. And I'm gonna ask you a question that maybe has negative connotations. And then after that, I'm gonna ask you about the positives that you've experienced working in technology. <laughs> Have there been any other barriers that you've faced and overcome, not just as a, a technology leader, as a woman, but also a very young one too? I think one of the main, um, the main barriers I think is around being, being sort of um, comfortable or being reflected as um, the person who has the technical knowledge. I think that is a bit of a barrier that we do face. Um, not to bring the blonde hair into it, but you know, you are, it's like the leopard print. You're a blonde haired woman who's, you know, of around a 30 year old age, coming into sort of a, a conversation with, you know, a bunch of engineers who potentially have been in their field for 20 years, as an example. And you're in there as the leader and, and being able to assert yourself into that position is something that you, 
that was uncomfortable and it was a barrier in the first instance. And it was un- it, it was something that, um, you know, didn't quite come naturally to me because you had to you had to be assertive. You had to make sure that those people in that conversation knew that you were the person that was in that leadership role. Um, and I think you do still face it when you're going into new environments where maybe the community or the group of people that are in the conversation don't understand or know your role in those conversations. Um, and so I think it is, um, you can approach it however you want to approach it, but you need to approach it head on. Um, I always find you need to make sure that in that moment that people do then, that are then aware of the position you hold and the responsibility you have. Um, and then you find from there that actually, if you can have those slightly longer standing relationships, actually, they can be very few, fruitful and powerful. But sometimes those first interactions, you do find that there is a little bit of a barrier that, you know, your male counterparts would not face. Amazing. So two last questions. First off, you mentioned our program together between TUI and Code First Girls. But what else are you doing to encourage more diverse people to apply to technical roles and also fostering uh, a culture of inclusivity within your teams? So um, when it comes to the the culture of inclusivity that we're trying to build within the teams, I think the the first is that we're going, um, we're building out a lot of colleague networks uh, within the organization. And these are there to sort of ensure that any of the diverse groups that maybe are underrepresented at the moment um, because we've got to face into that fact, they have a place where they can come together and work on topics with a group of people that are also passionate about those same topics, which is brilliant. Additionally, what we've also found, we have a lot of um, colleagues from across uh, across Europe and beyond, actually, that we work with. Um, And what we found, actually, is that there is... um, a, ch- a, a difference in understanding around the topics of DEI when you go into all of these different countries and all of these different cultures. And so what we're doing is we're actually embarking upon quite a substantial training program over the course of the next year to really ensure that everybody understands what DEI and, and obviously most importantly the inclusivity element of that really means um, to not only to the world but also to TUI specifically. Fantastic. Sounds like keep doing what you're doing. Just one final question. If you could sit down with Emily studying mathematics back at university, what advice would you have for your younger self? I think it's opportunities are endless. Um, so believe in yourself. Short and sweet. I like that a lot. Well, Emily, thank you so much for joining us. I could sit here and ask you about what you're working on at TUI forever. I find it absolutely fascinating. <laughs> and it's so encouraging to hear about your story and the, the barriers that you've, you've uh, experienced, but also overcome and the leader that you've become and the, the teams that you're fostering within uh, TUI. So thank you so much for your time. Um, and we'll be, we'll be sure to follow up. Lovely. Thank you very much for having me. It's been great to speak to you. Thank you.